As we continue to talk about anointing, I'd like to go into some examples of corporate anointing from the Bible. Mm -hmm. So let's look at Acts chapter 9, verses 10 through 16. This talks about this certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision. So here, said something to Ananias. Here's a vision and he's hearing from the Holy Spirit. And he said, here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him. So, you know, we can perceive this many different ways, but the way I, when I look at this, I say to myself, he was seeing a vision, so what's on his screen for ministry is very clear now. He's getting an input from the Holy Spirit. He's saying, Lord, it's me, I'm here. And then he said, the Lord, then it says, the Lord said to him. So there's actually audible voice, possibly. So that is another way we can talk about how the corporate anointing works. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get an audible voice. He says to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Oh boy. So Ananias in his mind, now his mind is filtering into this, because guess what? Everybody knows who Saul of Tarsus is. This is no joke. You know, like, Lord, you want me to go to his house. But that's kind of how he brings it out. And inquire at that house for Saul of Tarsus. And behold, he is praying. So there's, a, um, literally, this is what a uh, manifestation of the Holy Spirit called word of wisdom. You're seeing ahead. You're seeing, uh, he's being told ahead. Paul, the, Saul at this time, is, is praying at a certain house in a street called Straight. And the Holy Spirit's saying to Ananias, go to this street where this guy is sitting there praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. So Saul is having a vision on the other end, and he is seeing this guy named Ananias comes in, lays hands on him, and he receives his sight. So that's a manifestation working of miracles. Right. So working of miracles. Now, God's telegraphing this all by his Holy Spirit, it's what's on your screen for two different people in two different places. And now we're talking about the corporate anointing. How does this all begin to work? Then Ananias said, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, <laughs> how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And now here he is. He's not in the spirit as much anymore. His mind is kicking in. And he's like, now he's talking to the Lord about his questions about, are you sure about this? about this prompting and this leading, this, this anointing to do this. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But then the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine, to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So here Ananias gets word of wisdom about the future of Saul, who's going to be called Paul, his ministry to the Gentiles, to kings, and to the children of Israel. You know, here he was. He went the whole way to Rome. He was a Roman citizen. He, he dealt with the children of Israel. He was kind of a check on them, on some of the things that they were doing and saying, because there was an anointing that was placed on him, a corporate anointing, to do a special work, and it was a big call. Right. Now, we don't see too many people that have this kind of call anymore, but the whole point was God talked verbally, I mean, audibly. He said, we're seeing this example in Acts 9, that the Lord said to him, and so Ananias is now going through this, and he's going through this process. So how, did, how, does you, how do you see the corporate anointing in all this? Well, at the same time, Saul saw Ananias coming to him, laying, on, laying hands on him so that he would receive his, his healing. Now, it, it's interesting because in that passage, it doesn't necessarily say that Saul received the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So most of us uh, will say that that was something that happened to him on the, the road to Emmaus when he was knocked down on the ground, blinded and spoken to, to by the Lord himself. So when he, when he was taken to this room and he was staying there and praying and fasting and, and calling on God, God spoke to Ananias and sent Ananias to Saul or Paul, as he's called later, tells him that he's got a purpose because he's got a call on Saul's life and 
he's going to be the one, Ananias is going to be the one to pray for him that he would receive his healing. And not only that he would receive his healing, but the next step would be that he would introduce him to the brotherhood, to the, the saints that were there at Jerusalem. Now, you got to understand that that was a scary thing. He knew that that Paul wasn't going to be accepted. In fact, that, that people would probably still be afraid of him and be thinking that Ananias was deceived by Paul himself. So now you've got a, a thing going on with the Holy Spirit speaking to Saul and speaking to Ananias. Now, here's what happens in Acts 9, 17. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. So he went, he got through all of his uh, questioning of God. So I, I just want to say He acted on that. the vision. He acted on the vision. Sometimes, you know, it's going to be natural for you to question, is this of God or is, not, is this not of God? Uh, Lord, yeah, I hear you, but I'm afraid. But he got over it because he submitted himself to the, to the working of God in his life. He submitted himself to the greater plan and purpose. Mm. Now we're talking about the corporate anointing because from this point forward, it's no longer going to just be about Ananias, but God's calling a bigger picture into focus. So Ananias goes and he says, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road and you came, as you came has sent me <clears throat> that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh oh, now anointing. He's, now he's getting ready for the bigger plan of God in his life. So this was by laying on of hands. That's what this is. We're just going to read it the way it says it. And laying hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, now he is speaking out of an anointing that he had received by a vision or what's on your screen. He clearly saw what he was supposed to do. And then he goes in this corporate anointing and then he prays that he be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit without being born again. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm just doing logic now. This is like Christian logic here. Everything I read says, uh, even in Acts, when, when they went and they said, did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believed? Well, that's, there is this process. You get born again first. You, the Spirit of God comes and lives in you. But then there is an infill. This is called the filling of the Holy Spirit. So we've heard it as the baptism. We've heard it as the filling, uh, coming on someone. So there's different ways to talk about this anointing kick, boosting the anointing. And so now Paul is getting, he's still called Saul, but he's getting a call to the ministry, literally, with this laying on of hands, because Ananias has said to him, this is the man I've chosen for this purpose, and you need to come in and start this process, basically. And he comes in, and he lays hands on him, and of course he gets healed, supernaturally healed. And who was Ananias? A, a disciple. He wasn't, he wasn't apostle Ananias. He was a disciple. So that's really cool, because... This just shows you that you don't have to be five-fold minister to do this kind of stuff. You don't have to be a prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, or apostle to do this kind of work. God calls every one of us who are born of Him to be part of a corporate anointing. So when the bigger picture is there, like for instance, uh, we'll give a pretty clear example. Uh, we were in church yesterday and we were talking about this. We were talking about that sometimes you'll just get a... Uh, a prompting on your screen to call Dave. That's all you get, call Dave. And so this is all part of the corporate anointing. So now Dave has probably been uh, on his knees talking to Jesus. You know, I need help. I need somebody, somebody needs, I need your encouragement, God. He calls your number, rings you up. Ron, call Dave. And so you don't know anything beyond that, call Dave. So you shouldn't wait five days to call Dave, should you? If it's the anointing, if the Spirit of God is telling you to do it, and you know your shepherd's voice, then you should just call Dave. So you call Dave, and you, you, know, you don't have to sit there and say, well, I don't even know what to say to him, God. Uh, you know what I mean? Ananias started getting into logic. Oh, well, you know, that's Saul, the one who's been killing people. He's been the overseer over the killing. He was there with Stephen. I mean, you know, this is for real. You know, he didn't have to do this with God. Uh, because God just wanted him to be obedient at the level of anointing. So we get an anointing called Dave. We call Dave up. And Dave's like, wow, man, thanks for calling, Pastor Ron. 
Um, man, I've just been having a lot of trouble. Blah, 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 blah. And then God will then enhance this corporate anointing and allow you to see what you should be encouraging or exhorting or uh, praying with or ministering to, serving the Lord for Dave's sake in that, in that situation. So Paul receives his, his salvation because right. you have to have it before you get filled with the Spirit. He receives his healing and he receives then an anointing to be this baptism or this filling of the Holy Spirit. So now he's ready, to, ready for service. But did God put Saul into service right away? Not initially. Not initially. No, not initially. But, but he was so inspired by God that he went into the, he, he went into the uh, synagogues to preach the gospel. Now, can you imagine? Here was Saul who'd been out persecuting the Christians, and now suddenly he's preaching the same gospel. So it caused quite an uproar. And God eventually sent him out to, to spend time in, in, in the wilderness, as, as you might say, where, he, where God prepared him. But it was a period of time yet before he realized that he needed to actually be prepared for the ministry first. So corporate anointing is the bigger picture of what's on your screen. So if there was any way to say this, the, uh, the pinnacle or the most important thing would be what's on your screen for ministry in the corporate anointing setting. And then you personally then have to find what anointing God has given you to be part of the corporate anointing. And that's you're the hand, you're the finger, you're the nose, you're the eye. And then as you do this together with other people, then what happens is, what our experience is, it raises up this level. So we go to another level of anointing. We go to a, a wider view of anointing when we, when we move into corporate anointing. So there are many examples of this in the Bible, but really most importantly, there are many examples in the lives of Christians who are walking this walk and who have been watching their screen and saying, Am I supposed to do this? Is, God, is this God's plan for me to do? Uh, you know how this is as pastors. We're senior pastors of a church, and we're leaders of leaders. And so people come to us, and a lot of times they want us to discern this all out for them and tell them what the corporate anointing is. And of course, because we're wise in the Lord, and we're walking in the power of His might, uh, a lot of times God will just check us, and he'll, he'll not want us to divulge the entire picture to that person. Now, we don't tell them, look, I'm only giving you one-fifth of what's going on right now because here's what I see. No, God is working this out, so they have to discern, they have to find their part in the anointing so that we all work together. And that's, that's hard for people sometimes because many people come to pastors or leaders and they say, you know, what's, what does God mean by this or what's God saying? And we like to go back now and move them into what's on your screen. Like, what's the Holy Spirit saying to you? How did you feel when that, that, uh, that anointing sense happened? Or you, you heard the voice of God, three words, and now what do I do with them? And then we like to move people back into 1 John 2.20 says that he, this anointing teaches you all things. In verse 27, it's in you and it's truth. And Amen. so you know, you know all things. And if you would put faith to this and believe God, then you will rise to the next level because we can't be spoon feeding everyone in the work of the ministry. As much as I know over this many years and as much as Mary knows over this many years, we, we, it, we just don't disseminate this information freely to a vessel who might not be ready to contain it. That's a good point. So when we're talking about what, what the vessel is able to contain,